So if we don't do a good enough job of, of uh, relieving pain, what happens? Well, the, in the acute situation, lots of physical problems can occur. Heart rate can go up, blood pressure can go up, respiratory rate can go up. Uh, the person may sweat, they may be agitated, they may not move, they may not want to get out of bed. Uh, and all of these issues tend to be associated with unrelieved acute pain. And you might say, well, so what? Well, in someone who may have advanced cardiovascular disease, if their heart rate goes too high and their blood pressure goes too high and it puts too much strain on the, the myocardial oxygen supply and, and uh, demand balance, they can have a myocardial, myocardial infarction or heart attack from unrelieved pain. And so uh, you, you might think that, well, unrelieved pain may not be life-threatening, but yes, it may be in some situations because of these issues. People with unrelieved pain will be stressed. They'll have anxiety and depression, and they may have anxiety and depression for other reasons that's magnified by the unrelieved pain. Or they may have anxiety because of the pain itself, and the more anxious they get, the worse they perceive the pain to be, and then that makes them more anxious, and it's a vicious cycle. There are a variety of different sleep disorders related to unrelieved pain, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep, uh, early awakening, uh, awakening in, in, at night to take pain medications, and so on. Uh, immobility is a significant problem for uh, people with unrelieved ongoing pain. Uh, cognitive dysfunction, cognitive impairment, um, agitation, restlessness, frank delirium may be issues, especially in people with uh, uh, underlying chronic disease. Uh, there are uh, some social, some familial and, and social issues at play as well. The person may withdraw from interacting with their family, with their friends, and they may, may appear to be uh, 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 distant and that uh, improves with better pain management. Um, polypharmacy and uh, rational polypharmacy is a good thing, and I'll come back to that in a couple of minutes. But uh, lots of times when the person has unrelieved pain, we just keep throwing more and more drugs uh, at the patient, trying to get them some pain relief. And that sets the stage for adverse drug interactions and so on. So we have to be careful about weighing all of the, the factors that go into a mixed bag of medications for these people. Um, in the hospitalized patient, nursing time gets to be critical. If they have to go back and forth to a patient room, they may focus all of their time trying to relieve the pain of one patient at the expense of trying to take care of others as well. And we've already addressed uh, health care costs and productivity loss. And the bottom line is that all of these factors uh, work together to impact adversely the person's quality of life. Dr. Charlie Cleland, who's at our institution, uh, has shown fairly nicely, and we have, we have uh, manipulated his data just a little bit to, to illustrate this, but he has shown nicely the link between pain and function. And the bottom line is that if you look at a zero to 10 pain scale, with zero being no pain, 10 being the worst pain imaginable, that there's progressive decrease in functionality as the pain gets more severe, to the point where they get out here in the range of, of severe pain that basically all they're able to do is exist. 